contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Help me share your love and grace in all I do Lord, I come before you with contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Let me share your love and grace in all I do Oh Lord, transform me Change my heart completely to be more like you Oh Lord, renew me Heal my mind and broken heart today I want to be and to do what you commanded And be filled with the Spirit every day I want to serve you Shine a light to a darkened world And always live the truth in every way May your love for me be seen by everyone And lead others to trust and love you more discuss the topic of spiritual gifts um, and we'll use the Bible to help us understand more 
of spiritual gifts. It is my desire to have a series of studies with you on um, you know, our work as God's people. So the next time you will see me, we will have a discussion and, and a training on small group ministries and how we, through Jesus Christ and the aid of the Holy Spirit, can work um, to fulfilling God's mission here on earth and ushering in the coming of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, therefore, therefore, before we go any further, it would be prudent of us to ask God's presence and God's blessings and for his wisdom. Let us pray. Loving Father, Lord, we thank you today for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for such a wonderful day, um, for blessings of peace and the sunshine and the rain. Lord, we thank you for family. We thank you, Lord, for being part of your church and having the privilege of sharing your gospel. So, Lord, as we learn more from your word, we ask that you would, through your grace and your mercies, that you would speak to us. And, Lord, we ask that if you speak, we will listen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Um, for, jo for those who are just joining and listening in, um, our topic for this afternoon is spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Have you ever wondered or asked yourself the question, what is a spiritual gift? Or um, you may ask yourself, do I um, have or possess um, spiritual gifts? Or if I do, how do I know that I have spiritual gifts? Or maybe you may ask yourself, how can I use um, my spiritual gifts? Or you may ask yourself, what are spiritual gifts used for? Hopefully through the leading of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to answer as many as these questions of these questions today. Um, and then through Christ, the next time we meet, we will discuss small group ministries. Why small group ministries? And um, after that, we will have you know some training on how can you begin a small group, maybe even in your own home or in your um, community. Um, throughout the New Testament in particular, we learn of spiritual gifts. We learn, for example, um, in 1 Peter 4.10 and Romans 12, 1-8 and 1 Corinthians 12 and Ephesians 4, 6, 1-16 um, about spiritual gifts. Now, with the unseen of spiritual gifts, each of these verses or passages may give us or share with us um, the same spiritual gifts or uh, an addition, um, additional list to what the other passage shared. For example, in um, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, um, verse, from verse 1, um, Paul says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away, um, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. So, there are many gifts, but the same spirit who gives them and there are differences of administration but the same lord there are diversities of operations but it is the same god which worketh all and in all but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit um with all but for for 
to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the same spirit, dividing every man um, severally um, as he will. So therefore we see here that the Holy Spirit is the one who gives um, to his people sp um, spiritual gifts. Um, here we saw um, a few of them. We see the gift of administration. Um, then we saw the gift of healing, um, the gift of wisdom, um, the gift of knowledge, um, the gift of um, miracles, and even the gift of prophecy. But every gift is given um, by the Holy Spirit. In our discussion, this would be very important, a very important note for us to take in our discussion that the gift of um, or spiritual gifts are given um, by the Holy Spirit to God's people, to God's Christian um, children, um, Christians. Now, <clears throat> when we look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 8, um, Paul says again, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then if we go um, a little further and we look by um, from verse 4, we realize it says, For as, as we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. In other words, Although the church may have many members, the Christian um, um, religion may boast of millions of members. Although we may have millions of Christians, but not all of us may have the same exact spiritual gift. So therefore, so we being many are one body in Christ and everyone, um, and everyone members of one another. Having then gifts. Deferring to the grace that is given unto us, whether prophecy, let him prophesy according um, to his faith. Um, or ministry, let him wait as our ministering, or he that teacheth um, um, on teaching, or he that exalteth on exaltation. He that giveth, um, let him do with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without. And then we can go a little further, but we understand um, the point I'm making. Um, I'm showing you um, through the Holy um, through the Holy Spirit and His Word that we have different spiritual gifts. So here we see another list: teaching, exaltation, ministering, or um, that of the pastoral. Uh, ministry um, and even uh, mercy and also giving is considered to be um, a spiritual gift. So therefore, God has given to all his children spiritual gifts. God has set in the church different gifts. These are precious um, in the church and should be looked and valued as a precious gift to all God's children. Now, um, just want to um, um, ask a question so that we can um, maybe go through what we have already um, discussed. Do Christians have spiritual gifts? Um, do Christians have spiritual gifts? Many individuals um, are, uh, may say, or who may be listening, or who may um, listen to um, this presentation a little later, may suggest that they don't have 
for spiritual gifts. What are my spiritual gifts? I I cannot do anything um, for the Lord. I cannot pray. I cannot sing. I cannot preach. Um, I cannot hold a church office. Um, so as a result, many individuals come to church and the their desire is to just simply be ministered to. Um, rather than adding a second component where we minister also to um, others. So therefore, um, what is the role of leaders and the church um, in assisting members or um, assisting Christians in general um, in identifying their um, spiritual gifts. So therefore, what is the responsibility of the church? Number one, as I'm doing this afternoon, leaders are supposed to remind, uh, are supposed to tell, and are supposed to share with their members um, the knowledge regarding spiritual gifts. That we all have um, spiritual gifts and that God, God expects us to use our spiritual gifts. The church is supposed to train and um, to lead members into identifying their spiritual gifts. And when these spiritual gifts are identified, members are also uh, should also be led to using these um, spiritual gifts. So therefore, members <clears throat> are led to acknowledge, members are led to use the spiritual gifts, and as a church, the church is also responsible for recognizing um, the spiritual gifts of, of its members. Now, within our church, the um, Adventist church, there are um, offices that we, we see as, or we recognize, or we deem as ordainable. Um, so therefore, um, by laying of hands and ordaining persons, the church also shows that it recognizes those persons, spirit, the, the spiritual gifts of these saints in these regards. So therefore, you could have the office that of the pastor, the elder, the deacon, deaconesses. So when they are um, ordained in this office, it means that the church has recognized their, um, their ministry. Also, um, by, by placing those individuals in, in uh, or granting persons opportunities to use their spiritual gifts is another way of recognizing the spiritual gifts of members as a church. So I would like to um, <clears throat> encourage our leaders who are listening or may, be listen, may, may listen in the future to this presentation to spend some time and um, assist your, um, your members in identifying um, their spiritual gifts and um, in time to recognize the spiritual gifts of these members as it is used for the uh, master's service. When we look into the New Testament, I would like to use an example, the example of Philip. In Acts chapter 6, um, verse 5, we realize that the church, the New Testament church, acknowledges or recognizes the spiritual gifts of Philip, um, faith and help. Now, by the time we get to Acts um, chapter 8, verse 5 and 6, we realize that um, Philip diligently uses or occupies his ministry. And by the time we get to um, chapter, same chapter 8, verse um, 26 to 40, Philip is given more gifts by Jesus Christ. And so therefore, we realize that first the church acknowledges or recognizes the spiritual gift. Then um, Philip continues to use it. And as Philip continues to use the spiritual gifts or these spiritual gifts, God adds to what he has. So therefore, we see at least for here 
a pattern that if we use our spiritual gifts, that God will multiply them. Also, it is also seen that the church should also recognize the um, spiritual gifts of its members. So therefore, why spiritual gifts? Why spiritual gifts? Let's turn our Bibles to the um, book of Ephesians. So we will look at Ephesians chapter 4 and we'll consider verse 11 and 12. Ephesians his church spiritual gifts he says for the perfecting of the saints that's one for the work of ministry too for the edifying of the body of christ so therefore spiritual gifts are given one for the perfecting of the saints two for the work of ministry and three for the edifying of the body of christ so therefore god wants to establish his church he wants to establish his children in good grace, in his Holy Spirit, in the way of truth and life. So that's why we have here the, um, the spiritual gifts or the gifts given by God. The other reason that spiritual gifts are given is for equipping believers. Notice we said for the work of ministry. So therefore, spiritual gifts are given to, so that the saints could be equipped, empowered, and encouraged to do work of service, works of service. So therefore, the church members are encouraged to serve the Lord, to serve mankind, to help those who are um, less fortunate, um, to encourage pe persons to surrender to Jesus Christ, to even encourage even us who are part of the family of God to encourage us to continue living the Christian life and also to give us guidance as we move forward in this life, in the life that we are living in this sin-sick world. Also, the spiritual gifts are given for the enlightenment of the church of God. So therefore, that's why you have pastors, you have prophets, you have elders, you have evangelists. These individuals are given the mandate of God to enlighten and lead and guide his church into the way of of truth. So therefore, when we remember, um, we shared a while ago, that um, seen from the um, pattern um, that we see with the life of Philip as a man of God, um, we realize that when our spiritual gifts are used, when our spiritual gifts are used, God will multiply them. So I encourage us today that um, you, you can go online and just type spiritual gifts. You should get a few um, spiritual gifts inventories online. You could try maybe about two, three of them. And most of them are fun to do online um, and they are automated. So you, uh, you answer the questions and um, at the end of it, you would get results. So you could do two or three of them, you know, and you compare which, which um, of those are more consistent and you answer them truthfully. So therefore, when you, re um, you get the answers, you, could meet, you can meet with your pastor, your elder, or some sister in, or brother in church who you realize who um, is a leader who will encourage you and share with them your spiritual gifts. And I encourage you, to work on your spiritual gifts. If your spiritual gifts is help, um, serve persons. Go out there and, and help somebody and um, take care of a sick person. Do something nice for somebody in your, in your community. Um, join the community services. Um, join the women's ministries, the Pathfinder Club. Do not neglect your spiritual gift. Do not neglect your spiritual gift. I remember just last week I went to um, a school, a primary school. I did a week of prayer. And um, one of the things I rem remember sharing with these beautiful children at the school is the idea of practicing what you are taught that is right. 
Um, and the way that you will be consistent in doing it is by practice. So therefore, as I encourage you not to neglect your spiritual gift, I would like also to encourage you practice, 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 practice. Keep on doing it. Keep on doing it until you, the Holy Spirit will perfect the spiritual gift in you and he would add more spiritual gifts to you. And faithfully utilize your spiritual gifts. Don't do it for style, um, as we say. Um, don't do it when you choose to. Or uh, you, you work because uh, you like your leader. You are genuine at it. Um, you'll do it whether things are nice in church or not, whether things are difficult or not. You do not do it when you, you, you desire to do it. You do it when God desires you to use your spiritual gift. And also, um, allow me to add something else to that, um, to my encouragement in the development of spiritual gifts. There are some spiritual gifts that you can get formal training for. So, for example, if you have the gifts of, gifts of healing um, and you can, you know, through the Holy Spirit, you can lead persons to different herbal medicines that could help them. Um, you can do the uh, medical missionary um, program. Be formally trained. Um, if you have the gift of administration, right here in the Green Leader Conference, um, through um, Pastor Scott, um, Oliver Scott, the ministerial director, um, we have consistent um, um, eldership training. Join this um, the eldership training. Join the training of the elders. Be formally trained for your ministry. Um, if God has called you to be a pastor, um, you need to be formally trained um, for that. So there are, um, you know, various um, spiritual gifts that you could be formally trained for. Um, the gift of helps join the community service. And when there is training, get training. And, and with the training, coupled by the aiding and the guiding of the Holy Spirit, God will indeed bless you and guide you. And when you are, you are doing that, and when you are using your spiritual gifts, be joyous, be happy that you have found your spiritual gifts and work to all satisfaction. You know, and what the Bible says, whatever thou hands find have to do, do it with all your might. So as you work on your spiritual gifts, as you are guided through the Holy Spirit, as you serve through your spiritual gifts, do it with joy. Do it with great anticipation. Remember that you are working unto God and not unto man. All right? Then every Christian is gifted for ministry. All Christians are called to ministry. If you are not a minister, this is an other way of saying you are not um, a Christian. That's uh, um, just a quote from um, an, an, an evangelist. Um, remember, um, Romans 12, 4 to 6 says, For as in one body we have many members, and all the members do not have the same function, having gifts that differ according to the grace um, given to us, let us use them. Let us use these spiritual gifts. Um, just want to wrap up um, very quickly um, this afternoon. I realize our time has um, elapsed quickly, um, but that's fine. The next time when we meet, um, we will discuss why small groups. Um, so I will share with you the idea of small group ministry. And the third, um, the third time we meet, we will discuss, and I will teach with teach you right here, and we'll we'll try to be as practical as possible um, uh, um, how to start a small group ministry in your area, how to do it, um, how to do it. We all can be part of the work of God. We all can share in the joy that um, you know that saving, um, help saving a soul um, brings. We all can be part of it. And I encourage you by the grace of the living God, by the mercies of Christ, that um, you would use your spiritual gifts 
to the fullest through the Holy Spirit. Now, in Romans chapter, just to recap, in Romans chapter 12, we see the spiritual gifts mentioned of prophecy, teaching, service, giving, leadership, and mercy. In 1 Corinthians 12, we see again prophecy still coming there, teaching, we see service coming back, um, but we see an additional um, one, wisdom, knowledge, then we see faith, uh, healing, miracles, discerning of spirits, um, tongues and interpretations of them, helps and administration. And when we get to um, Ephesians chapter 4, we see prophecy um, being repeated, teaching being repeated, but we see three new ones coming in, apostle, evangelist, and pastor. Um, I encourage you to, again, go online, um, use the spiritual gifts um, inventory, um, use about three of them, they're very easy, most of them online are very easy, you know, you use them and try to identify your spiritual gifts. Um, when you have identified it, go to your pastor, go to your personal ministries director, go to a sister, a uh, brother in church who you consider to be strong in the faith and share with them that I have identified um, maybe preaching, maybe singing, um, maybe um, service, maybe giving, um, maybe mercy, maybe knowledge. Um, as my spiritual gift, and uh, my spiritual gift, and I would like to use it. And um, by God's grace, um, your local church will assist you in utilizing your spiritual gifts. Your local um, personal ministries leaders will assist you in utilizing your spiritual gifts for um, the Master. Remember that God desire. Is for him to come very soon. God's desire is for us to work for him. God's desire is for us to be part and for us to also experience the joy that salvation brings. Um, somebody worked with you. Somebody helped you. Somebody used their spiritual gifts. Maybe when you were going through some tough times to encourage you. Somebody use their spiritual gifts through the leading of the Holy Spirit to lead you to making a decision for Jesus Christ. There are many individuals, many, many more. Your brother, your sister, your uncle, your neighbor, your friend, um, your colleague at work, that you can use your spiritual gifts to help them um, make a decision for the side of right. I, um, I pray God's blessings upon us. And I pray that um, the Holy Spirit use me to present to you on um, spiritual gifts. And we got an, maybe an understanding or maybe a different view or maybe some clarifications on spiritual gifts. But before we leave, I think it is prudent that we thank God for today, that we ask him to guide us. And we ask him to also show us our spiritual gifts and also that he, through his Holy Spirit, would lead others to recognize the spiritual gifts in us. Father, Lord, we thank you for this afternoon. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Lord, you are merciful, you are kind, you are loving. Lord, you have called us to do a work that you alone can do. But Lord, you have given us the privilege to join you in the saving of souls. Father, not only that you have given us a privilege, but you have granted us your Holy Spirit. That it will give us the power and the strength and wisdom to do your work. So Father, as we have spoken about spiritual gifts... Father, there is a brother, there is a sister who is now motivated to learn the spiritual gifts or um, to, to use the spiritual gift for your cause. Father, there may be a brother or a sister or a, a fellow Christian for some reason, Lord, decided not to use the spiritual gifts. Father, I pray for your Holy Spirit that you would encourage them, that they will pick Pick up, Lord, their swords and their armor and continue doing your work. Father, bless us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
come before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Help me share your love and grace in all I do. Lord, I come before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Let me share your love and grace in all I do. Oh Lord, transform me. Change my heart completely to be more like you. Oh Lord, renew me. Heal my mind and broken heart today.